Well, it's official. I've attended my first Latin Mass. Hello and welcome back to the Catholic Era YouTube channel where we talk about Catholicism, we talk about the faith, we talk about we talk about different things, the traditional Latin Mass, um, news within the church, etc. Today I have some um, I have some good news to share, um, some personal good news. Um, as you know, in previous videos I have said that I have not attended the Latin Mass before. Um, I have not. I have. I before previously. I said that I. Um, you may have. Know, you may know that I have not attended the Latin Mass um, before, and I. I would. I only um, know my experience on the Latin Mass from watching it on um, YouTube, live streaming, etc. Well, that has changed, and this past Sunday, um, August. I mean, excuse me, July thirty first. I attended my first ever Latin Mass and today in this video we're going to be talking about my experience um, what I what things that stood out um, that I liked um, and um, just my overall experience um, attending it in, attending a Latin Mass in person um, and comparing the different the major differences obviously that I noticed uh, other than um, my Nova Sordo ordinary form mass um, that I attend at my normal parish. Um, so, so before we give, before we begin, we will be we will begin by praying. We will pray the Our Father um, before we begin. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater noster qui es in cheris, sanctificetur nomen tuum. Adveniat regnum tuum fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cello et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum de nobis hodie, et dimiti nobis debita nostra, sic ut in nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos amolo. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. So, we're going to get right into it. Um, we're gonna go over my overall experience. Um, so first, we're gonna go over the experience. My ex first, we'll start off by explaining um, what it was like, um, just some general things. Um, then we'll go on by I'll go on by um, explaining my experience, going over how it was, how I um, different things, and then we'll conclude by comparing it to the um, Novus Ordo Mass that I attend at my regular parish and the Latin Mass that I attended um, at a different church um, same diocese, different church um, uh, this past Sunday so some generalities um, so in the traditional calendar the pre-62, the pre-reformation pre-Vatican II calendar it was the eighth Sunday after Pentecost, um, I believe so. Let me just check my missile here. Um, it was the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. I um, mean, just an FYI, um, this was the missile that I used at Mass, um, at the traditional Latin Mass that I attended this past Sunday. I used this missile. This is the Angelus Press 1962 Roman Catholic Daily Missile. This is one of the most popular missiles um, in the traditional um, the traditional Catholic um, community um, other than the Father Lassance which I would like to get sometime um, I just have to um, go over it a little bit um, so I'll have a video on this pretty soon um, giving it giving a little tour of my missile going over um, the different things I like about it some of the some of the pros of it some of the cons about it the stuff that I don't like because um, there is some stuff in here that's not that I don't, I'm not a big fan of, but this uh, by far um, is a great missile for daily use. Um, I don't use it daily, obviously, because I don't, I don't have time to attend daily mass. But if I did, um, this is the missile I would use. I um, mean, as I said, this is the 1962 missile here. 
Um, so this doesn't have the pre-55 Holy Week in it, which is the only, which is really one of the only major downsides of this missile. But I'll I'll um I'll do a review on this missile pretty soon, um, just going over it. Um, but as I said, this past Sunday was the eighth Sunday after Pentecost in the traditional calendar. Um, in the newer calendar, the pre or the um, post Vatican II after the Second Vatican Council, um, I think it was the 18th Sunday in ordinary time or the 18th Sunday in ordinary time um, versus the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. Obviously, Pentecost is the same Sunday or the same day in the, the same calendars. However, um, they're just titled differently because other stuff occurs between then. Um, so that so that was that um so the mass that i attended um was a high mass it was not a solemn high mass or a pontifical solemn high mass it was just solely the high mass one priest um multiple altar servers um so there were six candles lit um there was incense um there was a sprinkling of holy water the asperges and um yeah, so the church, the church that I attended, I'm not gonna put it on here. Just I'm not gonna put it on the on the video, just for um, safety purposes. Um, the church I attended has a freestanding altar, so the altar is not a it's not a fixed altar, like against the wall, um, like you'd see at full traditional churches. Um, the altar was freestanding, um, but it was it was a beautiful church. It was the first time I was actually in the church. It's not far from me, but um, I've never attended there. And it's a beautiful church. The architecture is beautiful. The altar is beautiful. Now they have a freestanding altar, as I said. Um, it's like a marble and granite. It's beautiful. And then there's another altar behind it, which is a more of a fixed altar um, that you'd see at a, like a Institute of Christ the King or FSSP or SSPX chapel or parish. You what you'd see, um, but. Um, this this mass was a diocesan Latin mass. This was not any uh, fraternity or institute um, or society and anything of that matter. It was a diocesan um, Latin mass um, celebrated by a diocesan priest um, who has been given the who has um, the faculties to celebrate the Latin mass in our diocese. Um, so. Um, so the mass where I go, where I went, um, occur, occurs only only once a month. Um, so I'd like to plan it go again sometime again soon. Um, but thankfully to my friend Nathaniel, who has been on the channel recent, who is who I did a live or an interview with uh, a few videos back. Um, he will, he's taking me to I think he's going to be taking me to um, a Latin mass um, this upcoming Sunday. Which will be the ninth Sunday in, after Pentecost, um, and he goes to an Institute of Christ the King parish or um, chapel, which is close to here. So that will be a high mass as well. Um, so back to the mass I attended this past Sunday. Um, so as I said, it was a high mass. There was incense. There was altar servers. There was the asperges me with the with the holy water. Um, so that was that. Um, I went with my grandparents. Um, uh, my grandmother grew up um, attending the traditional Latin Mass. Um, that was the Mass she was raised in and received her sacraments in. Um, so that was that. Um, so we'll go through the Mass now. Um, so it started off. Um, the mass was at three o'clock in the afternoon. It was kind of late for a church. It was kind of late for a Sunday mass, but um, the church that the church that it was at um, also has Novus Ordo Ma or ordinary like a Novus Ordo Mass, Novus couple Novus Ordo masses um, at the like at the regular Sunday times you would expect. So they obviously had to have those masses as well. Um, um, so so it started off. Um, the priest came down the main aisle. He was he was vested in the cope. Um, I believe there was maybe three, maybe one, two, three, four altar servers, four or five altar servers. Um, 
So it started off with the Aspergis Me, um, the sprinkling of holy water before Mass. And then the rest of the Mass was pretty much your typical Latin Mass. Um, um, I, I, I understood it pretty well. Um, um, my grandparents, my grandparents did pretty good. Um, um, the only major thing I was concerned about, um, was receiving communion on the tongue. I've never done it before, so I was kind of, I was kind of nervous about, about that. Um, but it was real smooth, just went up, knelt down. There wasn't an altar rail, um, because that church, the church got, must have removed their altar rail or whatever. Um, so we went up, um, now normally there was, I think there was, there was four kneelers, um, four kneelers, like, at the at the entrance to the sanctuary um, uh, but then there was also people lined up outside of the sanctuary like by the steps of the sanctuary um, there was like kneeling pads so we knelt so um, we knelt down we received communion um, thankfully my grandparents um, they, nothing happened they were okay um, then then uh, so communion went pretty smooth um, the homily was really nice. It was a good analogy of, um, good, it was a good analogy. Um, the priest seemed to be a very, um, um, pious and holy man. Um, seemed to be more of a traditional priest. Um, he was wearing the cassock, obviously. Um, his alb, which is the white garment, um, it was beautiful. Um, the vestment set was beautiful. Um, the the chasuble, the stole, the maniple, as well as the the cope, which is the cape that they wear um, prior at the entrance to mass for the Asperges. Um So the mass went pretty smoothly. Um, I understand. I mean, obviously it's in Latin, so I didn't understand it fully. I mean, I I can understand a little bit of Latin, but I'm not fluent in it. Um, so the missile, the missile helped out a lot. Um, I printed out a couple, I printed out a guide for, for me and my grandparents. Um, and it's, it's just a simple little, simple little guide, um, that has, um, a guide when to sit, um, stand and kneel at mass. Um, you have, you know, you have your different parts of the mass and whether to sit or stand or kneel or whatever, or genuflect. And then, um, you have your, your high mass and Misa Cantata and you have your low mass right there. So you just follow along with whatever it is. Um, I went over that in the previous video. So if you'd like to watch it, I will, um, I'll put, I will put up a card here or something. Um, so this, this was helpful. Um, a few times throughout the mass, um, I did get a little confused. I didn't get, con I didn't confused with the um, actions of the priest in Latin or whatever. Um, it was more the kneeling, standing, sitting, whatnot. Like there was a point I think where the people in the pew, like the other people, were sitting, and I was still standing for for a minute or so. It was kind of embarrassing, but I sat down and it was okay. Um, pretty nice. Um, pretty nice. It went smoothly. As I said, um, my experience it, w it went really well. Um, um, as I said, I've never attended the Latin Mass before, so um, so this was my first time. It was a great experience um, for me spiritually. Um, I think my grandparents um, got something out of it, and it uh, brought it, my grandma said it brought back some memories from her from her from her childhood. So the Mass, as I said, went smoothly. Nothing really much, um, as I said. I followed along with the Mass. Um, not so much the canon and the consecration, but I, fo I was following along with the Epistle and the Gospels, the Collects, stuff of that nature, the Introit, Post-Communion, whatever. I obviously know some of the responses, like um, the Sorsum Corda, the Dominus Vobiscum, obviously. Um, but those were right in the Missal, so if I needed them, they were right here. The missile was a great help. Um, this is the so as I said, obviously this is the first time I got to use the missile um, at an actual mass, and uh, it went really smoothly. Just followed right along in the missile, and that was pretty much um, my experience. 
Um, I will say the people at the people at the church they were very generous. Um, not too obviously I wasn't talking to people um, because I don't know who they are and it's kind of weird just to go up to a stranger and talk to them. But um, the people seemed to be nice, um, very welcoming. Um, there was a lot of young people there, which is good to see. Um, there was some older people. There were some people there that I recognized from my parish church, my Novus Ordo parish church, that I recognized were there, um, which is good to see. Um, they were older, older folks, but um, yeah. So um, usually, usually you hear from um, from your modernist um, Catholics, you hear that the that the that the extraordinary for the Latin Mass is is for old people and and stuff, but. Um, there was a great, there was a big presence of young adults. Um, I'd say people in their thirties, twenties, thirties, maybe some people my age, uh, maybe younger. Um, obviously, I wasn't paying attention to that because the mass is more important. But um, so I will say there was a, there was a variety of people there, um, which is good to see a diverse age age group. Um, as I said, the church was very beautiful. It was more. It's more a. Um, it, it appears to be a Gothic style, or maybe a. I'm not really sure. Maybe a Romanesque. The church is very beautiful inside. It's kind of. It's smaller than I've seen on the, their live streams, um, which I wasn't expecting. I expected it to be a very big church inside, but it was more smaller. Um, the church was beautiful. The music was great too. I forgot to mention. Um, um, the Mass of the Angels. Um, was the was the setting that they that was chosen, um, and um, if you know what the Mass of the Angels is, um, that was used. Um, so I was singing along with the Gloria, the Sanctus, the Agnus Dei, etc., the Kyrie, the Credo as well. Um, the music selection was good. The entrance the entrance hymn was good. The um, recessional, the closing hymn was good. Um, and I don't think there was, there wasn't too much music in between the mass, um, at like the canon or whatever. Um, but there was, there was so, there was some music at the, um, at the reception of communion, the distribution of communion, like time when it was time to go up for communion. Um, so that was the overall, that was the major, that was the experience with the mass. Um, obviously some major differences obviously than my parish church um, the no my Nova Sordo parish church obviously the mass was ad orientum um, where the priest's back is to the people uh, but you're all facing liturgically east you're all facing together towards the altar with the priest um, um, the church as I said was beautiful the altar was beautiful um, the uh, the the altar servers were vested in the traditional altar server um, vestments or um, um, clothing for a traditional mass. They were in their cassocks and surpluses, which is the white garment which is worn over the cassock um, for altar servers um, and for the choir dress as well. Um, so that was that. Um, uh, as I said, there was incense. The incense smelled exa this incense uh, smelled exactly like the incense used at my parish church, so that was kind of cool. Um, um, as I said, the holy um, in the Latin Mass, holy water is used. I think almost every every Sunday, rather than in the in the Novus Ordo, where it's used um, only during Easter time. During Easter time and um, the 50 days after Easter um, so there was the sprinkling of holy water etc um, and as it overall it was a beautiful mass um, as I said the church was beautiful I keep repeating myself but um, the church was absolutely beautiful the mass excuse me the mass itself was beautiful and um, overall it was it was a great experience for myself spiritually um, mentally um, it prepared me really well for this for this week um, it prepared me really really well and um, um, deepened my connection um, with the mass 
um, it helped me it helped me experience um, the mass that um, thousands hundreds and thousands hundreds of saints um, um, experienced um, hundreds of saints celebrated um, for example Saint Padre Pio Saint um, Saint John the 23rd Saint Pius the 12th um, them as well as Benedict the 16th he grew up celebrating the traditional Latin mass and um, overall it was a great experience um, the people were welcoming the priest was a holy man um, and it was good to see the priest was a younger person rather than an older priest um, so the so the priest was competent and knew what he was doing um, his Latin was pretty good um, he seemed to be knowing what he was doing um, and it was overall a great experience um, I'd love to go back sometime um, um, as I said as I said this was a this was a diocesan Latin mass um, celebrated by a by a by a diocesan priest in a diocesan church um, um, but as I said um, thanks to the generosity of my friend Nathaniel um, I, will, I will most likely be going to um, an Institute of Christ the King Sovereign Priest um, Church this upcoming Sunday which will be um, which will be the ninth Sunday after Pentecost um, August the 7th um, will be that Latin Mass um, and it will be a high Mass so it will be, it will be the same experience just a different church uh, different celebrant um, by the Institute of Christ the King and um, sadly if you didn't know um, the Institute of Christ the King in Chicago which is its provincial headquarters is sadly um, expected sadly is undergoing some is sadly undergoing some um, changes um, by Cardinal Supich um, the Archbishop of Chicago um, it will be I hopefully hopefully nothing crazy happens there um, but as I said as I said um, great experience um, love to go back um, and uh, I encourage all of you watching to find your traditional Latin mass as well um, um, so, uh, find a Latin mass um, if the Latin mass isn't close to you um, try to find a reverent Novus Ordo mass with your incense every Sunday and your in your priest using some Latin and enchanting and whatever. Um, but um, it was a great mass, as I said. Um, would love to go back, and um, I think it really it really um, deepened my um, spirituality. Um, it deepened my connection with the mass and the faith, and it. Um, prepared me really well for the week and um, for the craziness coming up soon so um, as I said thank you guys as um, as I said thank you guys or as as always um, thank you guys for watching um, as I said um, find yourself a traditional Latin mass um, pray your rosary every day it's a spiritual weapon against demons against evil spirits against the devil himself um, against um, evil things in the world and it um, has has um, um, it, it's related to many miracles etc um, also um, um, start praying every day um, pretty soon I plan to start uh, praying the the divine office which is the liturgy of the hours which is prayed by monks nuns priests every single day um, I believe it is eight times a day, uh, something like that, maybe six times a day, seven times a day, I can't remember exactly. Um, um, as well, uh, as I said, um, and, uh, also get those Bibles out and start reading over the Bibles. Um, um, we're going to, um, I plan to start studying the Bible. This here is a, um, new revised standard version. Um, but I plan to get a Dewey Rames version pretty soon, which is the, which is the English translation of the Latin Vulgate, um, Dewey Rames. Um, but find yourself a good Bible, um, start studying it, um, looking over it, um, and just reading the scripture, because it is God's word, and we are instructed to read it. 
um, as I said, um, before we conclude, we will pray, um, we will now pray, um, we will pray the, we will pray the Hail Mary, the Glory Be, as well as the Come Holy Ghost Prayer. So we will begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis et peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostrae. Amen. Gloria, Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto, sicut erat in principio et nunc et semper, et in saecula saeculorum. Amen. And for the Come Holy Ghost prayer, the Veni Sancti Spiritus. Come Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, who hast instructed the hearts of the O God, who hast taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Ghost. Grant that by the gift of the same Spirit we may be always truly wise, and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Immaculate heart of Mary, pray for us. Chaste heart of Saint Joseph, pray for us. Most precious blood of Jesus, cleanse us. Nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Well, folks, that concludes this episode of the Catholic Area YouTube channel. Um, please consider subscribing. Um, it supports the channel. Um, please consider liking this video if you liked it. Obviously, there's a dislike button if you didn't like it. Um, um, drop a comment down below for video recommendations. Um, 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 maybe traditional Catholic items, um, um, sacramentals, um, books, um, stuff of that nature. Um, I also want to start looking at other missiles. Um, as I said, um, the this um, Angelus Press SSPX missile was great, um, but I'd like to look into the Father Lassance missile, um, which is a pre-55 missile. Um, um, so as I said... Um, I like. I'm gonna do a video pretty soon, reviewing this missile. This might be the, that. Might be the next video, um, reviewing this missile here, um, the Angelus Press missile. It's a beautiful missile. Um, it's made out of made out of imitation leather. Um, pages are real nice. Um, it's gilt, so it's um, it's the pa the pages are um, lined in gold, and it's beautiful. There's five ribbons. And it's um, great for the Latin Mass. Um, as I said, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, please consider subscribing, liking, disliking if you didn't like it. Comment down below. Um, share with your family, your friends, um, your fellow Catholics, people you know. Um, and as always, thank you guys so much for watching. God bless and Godspeed.